Hello everyone. So in this lesson, we're just going to practice the electronegativity. So I'm going to show you molecules and you need to determine whether they are polar or nonpolar. The first one is NH3. So how would you have known how to draw this? Well, I would have told you to say N and H and then you would have done a Lewis diagram. So that's only one. You would have done a Lewis diagram for each one and then you would have put that together. You are more than welcome to pause the video and try that out yourself so long. But by now, most of you are probably pretty good with this. So I don't want to waste your time. Now we need to determine whether this molecule as a whole is going to be polar or nonpolar. Well, let's first look at each bond separately. So let's look at an NH bond first. So I'm going to look at this one over here. Now we want to know if those electrons are going to move more towards hydrogen or more towards nitrogen. So we look at the electronegativity number, which is 2.1 and 3. So there's quite a big difference there. And so nitrogen has a, has a higher electronegativity. So the electrons are going to move more towards nitrogen. So I'm going to just to try to save space, I'm going to draw it right over there. So that's going to cause the hydrogen to be more negative. Sorry, more positive. I keep doing that. Sorry. And nitrogen is going to be more negative. Then obviously the other NH bonds would do the same. And so we would end up with the following. And so those are the arrows that we would have. So you could imagine it like these two cancelling out, for example. Now, they don't, they don't go into detail like this in class. I'm just showing you a nice way that you can understand it. The point that you need to understand is that are these arrows, are they all going to cancel each other out or not? Well, they won't because the, the one going to the right and the one going to the left, you could imagine that maybe they would cancel each other out, but then there's still that arrow going upwards. And so the net dipole moment is going to go upwards. That was very skew. So the net force, for example, is going to go upwards. And so can we say that this is a polar molecule or a nonpolar? Well, this is going to be a polar molecule and it has a net dipole moment. So it's a polar molecule, meaning that it's got more positives or it, it's got positives and negatives. They don't cancel each other out. Next we have CH4. So let's look at the individual bond. Well, hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1 and carbon has an electronegativity of 2.5. So carbon has a higher electronegativity and so the electrons are going to go more towards the carbon. And so we're going to see an arrow going like that. I'm now going to complete the other bonds. And so there we have this type of effect happening where the arrows would look like this. And all the arrows are the same length because it's a CH bond for all of them. And so they would cancel each other out completely. And so you would end up with zero as your overall effect. And so this entire molecule is going to be nonpolar. And so this molecule is going to be completely balanced as well. You can think of it like that. But the main thing you need to start realizing is that if it's completely balanced, meaning that all those arrows cancel, you need to immediately think of nonpolar. If the arrows do not cancel out, then it is polar. That's the important part. Here we have CH3Cl. So I'm going to start by analyzing a CH bond where the electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1 and carbon is 2.5. So the electrons will go more towards carbon. And so it will happen for all of the CH bonds. Then the C, Cl bond, which is over here, we need to analyze that one separately because it's a different one. So the Cl has an electronegativity of 3. So chlorine is more electronegative, and so the electrons are going to go more towards chlorine. So for this one, the arrow is going to do this. And so what we have is arrows that are doing something like this over here and so you could imagine that those arrows might cancel but these arrows are actually going to build upon each other and so the overall effect is a shift of electrons in this direction over here and so this molecule is not balanced so it's polar that's all you need to know polar because it's not balanced so i have a student who helps himself remember this by doing the following and I think it's quite good. He imagines, okay, so he first looks at the molecule and he says, okay, well that molecule is not balanced. 
so we'll just say unbalanced. He then thinks of polar bears as these very awkward animals that battle to walk and are always falling over. And so he has, and, and he knows that polar bears, well obviously they're gonna, as the name suggests, that it makes him think of polar. If you have an unbalanced molecule, you can imagine a polar bear that is falling over the place because it's not balanced, it's unbalanced. And so by doing that, you will start associating the word unbalanced with polar. And so yes, that might work for you, it might not. So next we have a water molecule. And so to work out whether it's balanced or not, we quickly look at the HO bond. And so hydrogen is 2.1, whereas oxygen is 3.5. And so the electrons are gonna go more towards oxygen. That will obviously also happen over here. And so our arrows do the following. Now, those arrows are not going to cancel each other out. And so if the arrows don't cancel each other out, then it is it's not balanced. Or you can think of it as unbalanced. Then you can think of an awkward polar bear that's battling to, battling to walk and it keeps falling over because it's not balanced. And where do polar bears live? Well, we can say at the poles or even in the name itself, polar bear. So it's only when the arrows cancel out if they cancel out, then we call that balanced. It's like a block being pulled to the right by three newtons and to the left by three newtons. Well, if that happens, the block won't move, and so it's balanced. If the arrows do not cancel out, such as over here, then we say that that is not balanced, and so then we can think of a polar bear that falls over because it's not balanced, and so not balanced means polar. And so that's all we're going to go through in this lesson is just to identify polar and nonpolar.